Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program Teacher Certification Course. My name is William. Uh, welcome to everyone if you're here at the house or at the uh, Peaceful Solution headquarters. And if wherever you are scattered abroad, please be seated. We'd like to welcome everyone who's tuned in all over the world here. Um, I don't know all the greeting and salutations. I don't know them in your language, but I think Chris could probably do it. Um, I know a few of them, but I won't even try it. I might, I might mess them up. Um, we are learning from the respect unit. We've been in there a few classes now. Uh, the Peaceful Solution Respect Unit. If you're watching online, if you're watching on uh, Facebook, you can go to the top of the page, hit the drop down menu. You should see uh, a, a, this is the fourth book in line, uh, the Respect Teachers Unit. Feel free to uh, download it uh, to follow along with our class. Also, as Chris said, feel free to download it and use it. We just ask that you don't change any content in it. Just teach it as as it's written to get the maximum benefit, the maximum result, the best results from the program. So let's go ahead. I, I believe that Chris, we left off in chapter one and uh, he left off on page 11, which is respect is the foundation of all positive relationships. Um, but before we go there tonight, let's go ahead and let's back up and let's read Let's read um, LP LP one LP one F page LP one F, and we are going to be on procedure number six. And actually, no, we're yeah, we're on procedure number six, and where it says inform students that respectful interactions lead to meaningful relationships. Uh, guide class discussion by asking students how respect improves the quality of relationships. You know, you're going to want to remind them what respect is. And, you know, remember to give the definition from this book about what respect is. Don't go online. Don't go to a dictionary. Don't go, you know, off memory unless you've memorized it. But be able to point out, you know, on page three, under the value of respect in the second paragraph it gives the definition of, res of respect and it means to recognize the value of people and things and to treat them with consideration care and concern go back to lp1f procedure six it says um guide class discussion by asking students how respect improves the quality of relationships and it says the answers will vary but might include the following Respectful interactions bring kindness, honesty, and care to relationships. And then it says, have students read the section Getting to Know You, found on page 10, and do the accompanying activity on page 11, then discuss their answers. And that's where we're at tonight. We'll pick up on page 11. So let's turn over to page, let's go ahead and start on page 10, because I want to kind of rehearse a little bit of what uh, Chris went over. You know, it's very important. Uh, it's been a few days. We, we tend to forget a lot of these things. But each teacher also adds another element that the other teachers might not, might not say or, or bring forward or even remember at the time. So it's great to have a variety of speakers as we have uh, Chris, we have Katan, we have David. Um, also, you know, to, and they all bring uh, different, uh, they all bring different backgrounds, different, uh, you know, we're all from different areas of the world. We're all, we're all from different families, um, etc. So we bring everyone brings a unique perspective uh, to the peaceful solution, as all of you will as well uh, when you become teachers. So let's uh, again look on page ten where it says "getting to know you." And Chris went over; he went back to the, the to the uh, acceptance unit and he reminded us what friendship is. You know, on the stages of friendship. You know, the four stages of friendship. You know, we don't just become friends automatically, or at least we shouldn't. Um, there's certain steps that we have to go through getting to know people. You know, and I believe the first one is the getting to know you, the getting to know you stage. But 
it says another important reason for relating to people respectfully is that it allows you to get to know them. Now, when I was growing up, that was a really, that was a Hollywood come on line, you know, in the movies, you know, where the guy would tell the girl, let's go to my place so we can get to know each other, you know. Well, that's not the way to get to know somebody, you know, by bring them into a compromising situation where, you know, they're morally compromised. You know, first of all, should you just go home with a stranger? Because usually, you know, that's that's where these come on lines come on, come in these movies where they say, let's go to my, they just meet some girl at the bar or at some party or something. They're like, let's go to my place and get to know each other, you know. Um, well, that's not the way to get to know each other the peaceful solution way, but that is the way to get to know uh, what kind of STD somebody has, right? So we want to avoid those kind of things. It says, respectful interactions involve not only the basic respect for all life, but also the following. And Chris went over courtesy, and it shows that you can be courteous in many ways. For example, we show courtesy by not interrupting someone when someone is speaking or by saying please and thank you when appropriate. And you know, you might not think please and thank you are a big deal, but you know, I was reading not long ago that um, when we ignore saying please and thank you, we're actually being rude. <laughs> it's actually training ourselves to be rude because the opposite of saying please and thank you is not saying anything you know when we want something or when we receive something and it's actually training ourselves to be unthankful it's training ourselves to be unappreciative of the benefits that we get you know and that's what thankful is you know to, to appreciate the benefits that you receive so training ourselves to say please and thank you is actually uh, training ourselves to be a respectful person and not to be rude it's also training others when we do it. You know, when we say please and thank you, we might remind some other adult to say the same thing or some other child that's in our earshot. They might hear us saying that and they might think, you know, I need to say that more often myself. Especially when they hear it from adults, because if they hear adults saying please and thank you, they tend to think, wow, I didn't know adults did that. I think you only do that when you're small. You know, we should all say please and thank you. That's called courtesy. When appropriate, it says. And the second one is kindness. Treat others with concern for their feelings. Don't speak or act in a way to intentionally hurt someone. And that's the, uh, you know, that's for another lesson down the road in Chapter 5 about, you know, there's, there's different types of disrespect. And sometimes we, and we unintentionally say things or do things that bring harm to somebody and hurt them you know, in an emotional or even a physical way. Sometimes we don't mean to do it. It's unintentional. Uh, but we should treat others with concern for how they feel, okay? And uh, we went over feelings in Chapter uh, uh, 2 of the Self-Control Unit. Uh, there's many, many different types of feelings that we can hurt. Um, fairness is the third one, which means treat another's possessions the way you would want them to treat yours. This means asking permission before touching another's belongings and respecting the answer given, even if it's no, even if the answer is no. And a lot of times the answers will be no, but, you know, as we learned even in the elementary series of The Peaceful Solution, no is okay. You know, you have the right to say no, I don't want you to use my, my, my comb. <laughs> you know, well, why don't you want to lo lo loan your comb to somebody? <laughs> you know, well... You know, somebody could have lice, you know. You end up letting them use your comb. And I remember uh, teaching these lessons to uh, uh, a, a, a seventh grade class one time. And I don't think the student quite believed what I said when I talked about sharing eyeliner. You know, sometimes girls share makeup and eyeliner with, you know, eyeliner and things with each other. And, you know, a couple months later, a young lady came to class and she goes, you know, you were right. She goes, I ended up getting, uh, she ended up getting some kind of pink eye, pink eye from loaning someone her eyeliner. Okay. So, you know, there's certain things that we shouldn't loan other people, but 
even if it's, uh, you know, we teach even if a child has a toy and someone else wants to use it, they don't have to allow that person to use it. It's their belongings. They have the right to say who can use it, when they can use it, how long they can use it, etc. Or even if they can use it at all, they have that right because it belongs to them. And we need to accept the answer even if it's no. Anything less than that is showing disrespect. You must also follow the rules they set concerning their possessions, you know, and you should set rules, you know, you shouldn't loan, you know, if somebody asks to borrow your car, you know, a trusted friend asks you to borrow their car, you better tell them when you want it back, you know. Um, uh, they, they might come back three days later and you're upset because they've had your car for three days, but you're, they're like, well, you didn't tell me, I told you I was gonna use it, you didn't tell me when I need to bring it back. So you really need to set rules, and you also need to let them know, hey, when you bring it back, make sure the gas is full, <laughs> you know, or make sure there's no cans or uh, trash in the interior, make sure you know you wash it, whatever. And if you do use it, make sure you treat it the best way you can, take real great care of it, and bring it back in even better condition, and then you'll probably be more likely, that person will probably be more likely to let you use it again if you treat it that way. Um, Honesty. Remember, this is getting to know you on page 10. Honesty. It says no one wants to be lied to or dealt with dishonestly. And you show respect to others by being honest in your words and actions. Be responsible for your words and let them be something others can rely on. You know, you want to be a trustworthy, honest person. You know, you can't trust people that lie to you, you know. I mean... Um, Because you're always wondering, you know, are they lying this time? Are they telling me the truth? You know, you always got to guess, you know, to me. If you lie to me, you know, and I know you're lying, if you have a track record of lying, I'm always going to have to wonder whether you're lying to me or not. And is that my fault that I have to wonder about that? (laughs) No, it's it's the person that's lying to me. It's their fault because they they have gained that reputation. That's why we shouldn't be lying to one another at all. We should be honest with one another so we can know we can rely on each other when when we're communicating. And then obedience. uh, It says, if someone in authority is telling you or asking you to do something that is not harmful or immoral, use a courteous tone of voice, be obedient, and follow instructions. So I got a question for the children, you know, is uh, if your parents ask you to clean your room or do the dishes, is that child labor (laughs) is that uh, something that's against the law immoral or harmful if your parents ask you to clean your room or do the dishes no they're actually training you you know to 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 be able to clean your own dishes when you get older and to clean your your house or clean your room so you, you learn to take care of your things so when you're old enough to have your own things you'll have a clean house right um but it is child labor because you're it's labor you got to work right <laughs> and you're a child but it's not the dis, it's not the unlawful child labor i guess you know where a child's working for wages you know and probably under even minimum wage or something but anyway okay so obedience remember it doesn't include asking you to do your homework or clean your room or do the dishes or something like that that's not harmful or immoral remember immoral brings harm to you or somebody else so if it doesn't bring harm to you or someone else it's okay to do now on page 11 it says by interacting in respectful ways you can develop meaningful relationships think of one of your friends how did you become friends what kind of interaction did you have that led to a bond of friendship well you know so here's how I became friends with my best friend. Uh, we went to a party. We shared bong. We shared the same bong. He gave me some dope, right? And, you know, we both r- realized we both like Led Zeppelin and fast cars. So we became friends, <laughs> right? <laughs> Is that how you become friends? <laughs> Well, that's how we used to become friends. I mean, that I'm just describing to you how I used to make friends. Okay, before I learned what friendship actually was, what I realize now is what I was making was acquaintances, 
uh, drinking buddies, drug partners, you know, or whatever you want to call them. But I wasn't really making friends because, if you recall, the, the peaceful solution teaches that friends don't, first of all, friends don't ask friends to do anything that will bring harm to themselves, others, or the environment or property. Friends don't let friends get drunk, let alone drive drunk, right? These are all things we learn when we get into the peaceful solution. But before that, we're listening to, you know, everything that everyone else in society says about friendship. And we're getting a lot of misleading ideas about what real friends are. And, you know, a lot of times our parents do point out these things to us when they tell us, you know, you shouldn't be hanging around that person, you know, um, you know, there. I notice that you're starting to uh, get some really bad habits, or you know, you're picking up some very bad language, or whatever else they might be pointing out to you. And you know, we don't tend to want to listen to them, you know, because we value that person more than we value what our parents are telling us, and they're trying to guide us away from these negative behaviors. And a lot of times, we just don't listen to them, or we think, "Ah, you're a drag, man. You're just trying to spoil my fun," right? <laughs> When really they're trying to rescue you from, you know, a real a possible danger that you're in. You just don't see it that way because we tend to think our parents don't know as much as we do. Or our teachers don't know as much as we do. And the fact is, they know a lot more than we do. Now, in some cases, you're right. They don't know as much as they should because, in fairness, they haven't been taught moral character. So they're not always going to know these basic things. And some of them I'll go over tonight just to show you how uh, out of touch with moral character society actually is. Now it says, when you consider the positive relationships in your life, your parents, siblings, friends, and teachers, you can clearly see the important role respect plays in forming positive social relationships. So this is where Chris left off uh, last class. In the box there it says, respect is the foundation of all positive relationships. And as you know, a foundation is important because it holds everything up. And if it's not something solid, if it's not a solid foundation, the relationship in this case, just like a house that's not on a solid foundation or a building, any kind of building that's not on a solid foundation, eventually is going to collapse. It's going to fall. You know, and uh, anytime disrespect begins in a relationship, if it's not stopped at some point, if the person doesn't realize, you know, hey, I'm making a bad choice by treating this person this way, calling them names, whatever I'm doing, bullying them, teasing them, uh, whatever it might be, unless they wake up to that fact, eventually that friendship's going to end, okay? Uh, that relationship's going to end, whether it's a friendship, whether it's a marriage, whatever. Eventually, those things will come to an end if we don't stop the disrespect. So we got to have respect we got to know what respect is, and we've got to uh, train ourselves to show that respect in all forms of interaction with other people. So it says on the lines below, write about a positive relationship you have. It could be with a parent, friend, sibling, or teacher. List the ways you show each other respect. And it, you know, it shows on the line, name the person, and the way respect is shown to each other. And it tells you that, your answers should reflect what you see on page 10 there about the behaviors like courtesy, kindness, fairness, honesty, and obedience in your interactions together. It shouldn't say, you know, me and so-and-so, you know, do something, you know, that's some kind of negative behavior, you know, and it shouldn't show that your friendship began with some kind of negative, uh, uh, you know, interaction, you know. Of course, now... I'm not saying that you couldn't meet somebody that, you know, you were doing something that you shouldn't do, but then you both learn the peaceful solution and you realize, oh man, you know, we, we made the wrong decision. You know, we weren't doing the right thing. And you both change and you both change your, your behavior. Well, that, that's fine. I'm saying, you know, if you're, if you're getting off on the wrong foot and you're not following the steps the peaceful solution teaches about friendship and your friendship isn't based on you know, courtesy, kindness, fairness, honesty, and obedience, then it's not true friendship. Not as not as uh, the peaceful solution teaches. It's not a true friendship. And eventually, 
that friend won't be, that quote unquote friend will not be in your life anymore. You know how I know that? I don't have one person. Uh, now, when I went to high school, I had a lot of friends, you know. Uh, in fact, and I had a lot of friends that were from all different cliques in the school, whether they were jocks, whether they were, you know, nerds, whether they, you know, as they call them, uh, whether they were uh, stoners, you know, whatever you wanted to call them, whatever class of people they were, I had a lot of friends because I learned to get along with everybody. When I was in uh, juvenile detention, um, you had to learn to get along with others because you'd have a really rough time if you didn't. So, um, uh, but you know what? I don't have any of them, you know, uh, on my Facebook page, you know, on my on my friends list, on my Facebook page. I don't have any of them. I don't have, they don't call me. I don't, I don't interact with them anymore. You know why? We never really were friends. We weren't really friends. Because if we were friends, that friendship would last forever. It would never change. Okay? So I never really built, and I'm really sad to say that. I'm really sad to say that I never really built positive friendships, you know, because the respect was not the foundation of any of my friendships or quote unquote friendships in school or even along the way. You know, I'm 60 years old now. I don't have, you know, I can't say that I've, the, my real friends now are in the peaceful solution. I can say that, that I do know, but ones leading up to uh, my education and peaceful solution, they're not around anymore. So remember, it's very important to base our friendships on those things that you see on page 10. At the bottom of page 11, it says, showing respect is to recognize the qualities and worth of others and to treat them the way you would want to be treated, the peaceful solution. So recognizing the quality and worth of other people, okay? And everybody's worth something, you know, and everybody has something they can contribute, whether we realize it or not is irrelevant. We should just know automatically from the peaceful solution that you know, everyone is has worth and that everyone deserves respect. You know, that wasn't what we were taught growing up. You know, we were taught, you know, show that first slide, if you would. This is a common this is a common saying, you know, in fact, it hangs in a lot of schools we used to go into. And we used to have to tell uh, I think Chris mentioned uh, it was the second largest uh, uh, middle school in Houston, Texas, had this hanging in the uh this particular saying hanging in the lunchroom and uh they wanted to teach the peaceful solution school-wide so we went there and we trained all the teachers to teach the peaceful solution we uh downloaded all the peaceful solution uh junior high books onto the teachers uh onto the teachers uh computers so they could show them on the smart boards and everything we got them all set up and then one day we were talking to the principal and we pointed out, you know, what was, if you could put that slide up again, we pointed up this, we pointed out what that, that banner said in the lunchroom, that respect, you, to get it, you must give it, okay? And we said, you know, that doesn't, uh, that's not what the peaceful solution actually teaches. It teaches that we have to respect everyone, that everyone deserves respect, whether we get it or not from that person. And she goes, you know, I never really thought about that. She goes, I'm going to have them take that down. <laughs> and she did. She had them take it down because she realized that it was actually teaching that, you know, you can disrespect somebody if they don't give you respect. But it was teaching it in a subtle way where they didn't even realize that's what the message was. But that particular uh, principle, really great principle, by the way, she took it down and she put up. Uh, stop posters and things, stop acronyms and things around the school to promote the peaceful solution and what the peaceful solution taught. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's turn over to page 12 and um, let's look at food for thought. Some little quotes about respect. This slide here, if, you're, if you don't have a book, you can look at the slide. Some of the, the apple says, let respect begin and end with you. Um, it might be an orange down there in the right below it. It says, respect never hurts anyone, not even yourself. 
So see, you know, because, you know, respect begins with you. You know, you have to respect yourself first. We have to learn how to respect ourselves. And we do know in a lot, in, a, in, a, in many ways, we do know how to respect ourselves when it comes to hygiene, things like that. But not everyone does. Not everyone does. Don't think just because you know certain things about respect or self-respect that other people do. It's not necessarily true. You can never think that way. Remember, everyone comes from different cultures, different backgrounds, etc. Now, uh, the pair in the middle says, to appreciate someone means to recognize that person for his or her qualities, talents, abilities, and values. You know, it's, it's even like the peaceful solution. And, you know, when we, when we come and we, we learn the program from the different teachers, I learned to, uh, you know, I really highly value uh, the different teaching styles of different teachers, you know, and, and different perspectives that I get from Chris, from Catan, and from David. And even talking to the peaceful solution students that don't, that aren't up here teaching yet. I get a lot of different uh, uh, information and a lot of great things, and I'm like, man, I didn't even think about that. Well, where'd you get that? You know, how'd you, you know, wow, we could learn a lot from each other, you know. So uh, it's really great. Never dismiss somebody. A lot of people have really great qualities, talents, and abilities and, va and values that we don't even have ourselves. But the more the more we get to know that person we should we we can actually glean those from other people too you know we we in other words they can rub off on us in a positive way so we should never we should never and we tend to sometimes i know even sometimes i get like i like I act like i'm so busy i don't have time to do this or to sit down and talk to somebody or stop and talk to somebody but i've been trying a lot more to do that and not just you know well, I'm too busy, you know, to, to, to stop and say, you know, hello to that person and try to get to know that person a little bit, you know, because uh, it's just not beneficial. I think David mentioned once, you should try to have as many friends as you can. You should try to make as many friends as you can, you know. You don't need enemies in the world. What you need is friends, you know. So you need to try to make as many friends as you possibly can with everybody, okay. And um, sometimes you have to force yourself to do it, you know. Um, I remember uh, a few times, you know, I used to look at people, certain people, and I'd think, I don't think I'd want to be their friend. I don't even think I want to talk to that person. I don't like the way they look, you know. I don't even like the way they, I don't like the way they walk. I don't like the way they comb their hair. I don't like, you know, so I don't think I'd want to be their friend, right? Or, you know, they might have a certain job, and I might think, I don't think I'd get along with that person very well because... But then when I actually got to know that person, sometimes I was put in a situation where I had to work with them or I had to deal with them in some way. And when I actually got to know them, it was kind of like, man, I, should, I would have got to know this person a long time ago. It's a pretty great person. And I'm really glad that I got to know them now, you know. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't, um, we shouldn't judge people by appearance. Remember, don't judge a book by the cover. More than meets the eye, chapter one of The Peaceful Solution. There's more than meets the eye with people. And even somebody that you look at that you might think, you know, man, he's got holes in his pants and, you know, he's, uh, his hair's all messed up and, you know, he, um, doesn't smell like he took a bath today. Um, you know, that person could end up being your best friend. That person could be up, end up being your only friend. <laughs> you know, I don't know, you know, but don't discount that person, right? I'm being influenced by somebody in the back there. Thanks. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So let's go to the banana now. It says, respect yourself first. Could you put that picture back up? Otherwise, they'll think I'm going bananas and I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. So the banana there says, respect yourself first so that others might respect you. Now, don't get that confused with what I just showed you about respect to get it, you must give it. What this is actually saying is, if you respect your first self first, if you show your self-respect, a person that doesn't know the peaceful solution is going to be more likely to show you respect. Okay? Because remember, what they've learned out there is you have to give respect to get respect. What you've learned as a student here is, no, you owe respect regardless of whether you get it or not. 
to everybody. I don't care if it's a woman, a man, what culture they're from, what color their skin, what religion they are, doesn't matter. Okay, we owe everyone respect. Whether they're treating us right or treating us wrong, we still owe them respect. Okay, we can't forget that. Retaliation is never an option in a peaceful solution student's life. Okay, so, and disrespect should never be an option as well, you know. And I'm going to show you that that they actually think it is an option if someone doesn't dis, if someone doesn't show you that respect. So remember, it just means that when it says respect yourself first, so that others might respect you, it just means that people that don't know the peaceful solution, they might be more likely to show you respect if you respect yourself first. Okay, so let's go to page thirteen. But before we do that, let's go back to LP. LP1F. <clears throat> okay, 11, 12, okay. All right, so step seven. It says, explain to students that when we interact in a disrespectful manner, it causes resentment and hurt feelings. Have students turn to page 13 in their handbooks and read the section entitled, Disrespect is Not Normal. Tell students that by seeing and hearing so many forms of disrespect, they could misjudge this type of behavior as normal. Stress that disrespect is not normal and should never be accepted as such. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn over to page 13. And it says, did you know that disrespect is not normal? <coughs> it says, if respect leads to positive interactions, what do you think disrespect will lead to? Disrespect is the foundation of all negative and abusive interactions and relationships. In our society, disrespect is seen in many different forms, but one thing is certain, it can result in hurt feelings, resentment, verbal and physical aggression, violence, war, and even death. Examples of disrespect are so common in our society that they are often considered to be a normal part of life. The fact is, it is not normal to interact with others in disrespectful ways. Disrespect should never be accepted as just a part of life. You know, it's like uh, you hear sometimes teachers or parents might say something like, oh, bullies, you know, bullying, it's normal, it's just part of growing up, you know normal for that boy to pour that girl's hair on the bus, you know, on the bus or, uh, you know, it's normal for, you know, someone to slam someone against the locker once in a while, you know, or something, you know, bullying, you know, it's going to occur. You know, you hear things like that or you hear, well, it's normal for a brother and a sister or two sisters to fight. You know, that's normal. It's normal for them to fight. It's normal for them not to get along. It's normal for them to take each other's belongings without asking first. It's just normal. They do that. Well, it shouldn't be normal. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's not normal. It's not, it shouldn't be the norm. Okay, but it is normal in society that hasn't been taught moral character. Yes, it is, it is normal in that, uh, in that uh, respect. Okay, so, um, let's see if I was going to, okay, let's not do that yet. Okay. So, um, it says examples of disrespect are so common that they are often considered to be a normal part of life. The fact is it is not normal to interact with others in disrespectful ways. Disrespect should never be accepted as just a part of life. And it says the following is a list of some of the common forms of disrespect that are widespread within our society. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it says verbal disrespect, number one. Verbal, di now, now get this. It says verbal disrespect includes not saying please and thank you or excuse me. Oh, wait a minute. I thought that was just optional. You know, I could say please or thank you if I felt like it. <laughs> right? Because back here, you know, it tells us that's part of, you know, uh, respectful interactions on page 10, remember? Uh, 
courtesy, saying please and thank you. That's part of common courtesy. So if we're not doing that, we're actually being rude. We're actually being disrespectful if we don't say please and thank you to our parents, our teachers, the cashier, whatever, you know, whoever we're interacting with, right? We should make it a habit to try to do that, okay? Um, and you know what? If you don't practice the little things like that, if you don't practice the little things like saying please and thank you, do you think you're going to be concerned about the bigger things that come that have to do with respect? Absolutely not. Why would you? You don't even care whether you say simple please or thank you. So you're actually training yourself not to be respectful in other areas and even larger areas of life. So you got to think about these things. It's the little things that are going to actually come back to bite us later on if we don't start practicing them now. Cursing, name-calling, teasing, bullying, threatening to hurt someone, and sarcasm. Sarcasm. Now, we, we should know we've been through the, re, we've been through the self-control unit. We talked about bullying. We've been talking about uh, uh, teasing, bullying, and how that harms other people physically and emotionally, etc. Threatening to hurt someone. But what about sarcasm? What do we know about sarcasm? Because, you know, um, let me show you the next slide. Let's look at the definition of sarcasm. And I want you to write this in your book, if you can, at least one of these examples, and, and give the de Merriam-Webster's de definition of sarcasm. It means a sharp, a sharp and often satirical or ironic utterance designed to cut or give pain. Okay, let me, let me break that down a little bit. Again, I'm going to read it again. Sarcasm, a sharp and often satirical or ironic utterance designed to cut or give pain. <coughs> so satirical would mean like, you know, satire is kind of like, uh, it's like onion news. You know, it's not real news. It's supposed to be funny. It, it makes they make it look real but it's not really real it's just funny it's supposed to be humorous ironic meaning uh, I believe um, the opposite of what you're really saying is the true what you're really ironic I think is like the opposite of what you're really saying okay and I'll give you an example here in a minute examples of sarcasm are zombies eat brains you're safe So what are you implying? Well, that that person doesn't have any brains, right? That's irony because, <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be funny unless it was someone said that to you, <laughs> right? Okay. Zombies eat brains, you're safe. You are depriving some village of their idiot. You've heard of the village idiot? So you're basically telling someone that because you're here right now, you're depriving the, some village somewhere of an idiot. You need to go to that village, right? Or I'm not insulting you. I'm just describing you. That's sarcasm. I'd agree with you, but then we'd both be wrong. <laughs> okay? That's called sarcasm. It's It's really designed just to cut that person down or give them pain in some way, some kind of emotional pain, okay? Which isn't something we'd want to do because are we wanting to bring pain and suffering and any kind of harm to somebody? No, it's not moral, right? Here's another example of sarcasm. You know, the guy walks in, the guy's got his feet up on the desk, and he says, don't work too hard, okay? That's sarcasm. Those are examples of sarcasm. Okay, you should write them down if you uh, if you don't if you so you can tell your students what it actually means. Give them a, give them the examples. Okay, you know another example of sarcasm might be something like uh, oh man, was that one? Um, there was another one that was listed there and I took it out, but something to do with uh, uh, oh never mind, my mind's. If, if it comes to me, I'll, remind, I'll, I'll tell you. But I'm sure you can think of other examples of sarcasm, sarcastic remarks that people have made to you. 
And just remember, consider if you're not being polite, you're being rude. Being rude is childish and immature, you know, and uh, being rude isn't attractive either. It's not attractive to people. So, you know, we need to make the effort to be polite in our speech. And all of us sometimes have engaged in sarcasm with other people. So we got to be careful what we say. Okay. Then there's physical disrespect, which includes assault with a weapon, hitting, pushing, or kicking, as well as touching someone's body inappropriately. <coughs> Those are all things we see in movies, right? Most movies, you know, I, I just described most movies and video games right there, right? Most forms of entertainment, books, magazines, movies, video games, etc., include assaulting people with weapons, hitting, pushing, kicking, touching someone inappropriately, like I showed a few months ago. I think we talked about what they do in the schools where they have a, a grab donkey Friday, they call it, and uh, they go around touching each other, boys touching girls inappropriately, okay? And it's like a, they call it a, they call it a, a rite of passage or a, it's normal, you know, they just do that. It's something children do, you know. Let them have their fun. Well, it's not, it shouldn't be the norm, you know. Somebody needs to step up and somebody needs to put it, somebody needs to put an end to it. Somebody needs to say, hey, this isn't right, you know. And they need to teach them the peaceful solution so they know, look, you don't put your hands on somebody like that, you know. You should never do that. It's very disrespectful. Not, And you're disrespecting yourself, too when you do it, which is the next one. Self-disrespect includes not taking care of yourself by not keeping yourself clean, abusing alcohol, experimenting with drugs, engaging in premarital sex, and even dressing and acting inappropriately. <coughs> and we'll get into the more about the dressing later on in the book. Um, I don't want to jump ahead on that, but, you know, it talks about abusing alcohol. Remember, this is the a junior high book, so there shouldn't be any drinking alcohol when we're, you know, this age, but we should learn when we're young that, you know, when you do become of drinking age, you don't abuse it. You have to use alcohol responsibly, you know, and that means not drinking to get drunk, not over drinking, not overdoing things, using self-control when we drink, because believe it or not, alcohol does have benefits if you use it correctly, but it doesn't when you misuse it. And experimenting with drugs or engaging in premarital sex. Remember, we've talked about all these things in previous books. We showed the STDs that come from these things, even from touching somebody. Remember, even from touching somebody, you can get an STD. You don't have to engage in premarital relations with that person going all the way with them to get an STD. You can get them simply by touching someone. That's what's really... Uh, dangerous about grabbing somebody the way they do in school there. Um, <clears throat> and then there's disrespect for the environment, which we just covered in the last book in Chapter 7 of the Self-Control Unit. Disre disrespect for the environment includes littering, polluting, and harming animals and plants, you know, or genetically modifying organisms, you know, or... Uh, uh, you know, uh, what are some of the other things they were doing? Feeding cows uh, uh, bone meal, feeding feeding uh, animal protein to uh, cows and giving them mad cow disease. Remember, we learned about all those things in the last book. Don't forget those things. Those are all part of disrespecting the environment, okay? We're not showing care, consideration, and concern we're not recognizing the value of people when we do that because people eat the meat that we're contaminating. Okay. People, uh, are drinking the water that we're contaminating. People are breathing the air that we're contaminating. You know, we're not showing value for people when we do these things. We're not, we're not, we're not seeing the worth of other people. Not just other people, but other human, but other, but plants, animals, the 
even the uh, microorganisms that you can't see. We're bringing harm to these things. That's not respecting. We're not showing consideration for these things. So um, disrespect for property includes stealing and defacing property, as in the case of graffiti. You remember graffiti, I think in the character unit, we talked a little bit about graffiti, you know, defacing, you know, writing on desks at school or uh, writing on uh, uh, or destroying school property in any way or, you know, on the playground. I know in a lot of parks in different cities, uh, people ruin uh, the slides or the swing sets or, you know, whatever uh, things are out there for people to enjoy. People, people go in there and they destroy them purposely. You know, not realizing that, you know, these parks, you know, somebody's going to have to pay for all the damage, right? <laughs> and it's the same person that's destroying it is going to have to pay for it because they pay taxes normally. And even children pay taxes. Remember, we went over that before, too. When you buy something at the store, a lot of items, you know, have sales tax tacked on to it. So don't think you're not a taxpayer, even if you're a young person. Okay, so defacing property, um, as in the case of graffiti, or stealing, you know. Remember, even touching something that doesn't belong to us is stealing. Don't forget that. Don't don't think that you have to put something in. You have to pick something up, look this way and look that way, and walk off with it to steal something, okay? You can steal people's property by simply putting your hands on it without asking first. Okay, that's stealing. You can also steal people's reputation. You can steal time. You can steal authority. You can steal uh, uh, somebody's, uh, you can steal someone's authority, et cetera. Remember, don't think stealing is only stealing tangible items. You know, there's many forms of stealing, okay? Um, the last one says other forms of disrespect include rude or vulgar gestures and inappropriate public behavior like playing songs with vulgar language in a public place. And there's plenty of that nowadays because a lot of the music that the young people listen to have a lot of foul language in, in the songs, you know, and uh, they think nothing of, you know, driving through uh, HEB parking lot or Walmart or something and they got their boom box blasting in their car and it's blasting profanity, you know. Um, I even remember going to a, a, a Walmart in a, in a town down south, and they were booming it off their speakers on their on the on the roof, <laughs> you know. So, you know, but in fairness, again, you know, it, it's like it becomes normal. It's like they think it's normal because, well, they're singing it, so you know, it must be okay. They're playing it on the radio. You know, it must be okay, you know. Hey, look, simple rule to go by. Just because society says it's okay doesn't mean it's moral. You do understand that, right? <laughs> Just because society says something's okay and acceptable doesn't mean it's acceptable for you as a peaceful solution student because if it's not moral, it's not acceptable to us, okay? So... You know, don't partake in these things. Let's go to page 14. And let's look at the question of the day. It says, why do people choose to disrespect themselves and others? Can you go to the next slide? Because <laughs> I really like this picture the Peaceful Solution puts in there, you know. Why do people choose to disrespect themselves or others? And you have, looks like dad there getting, he's got his one son in a chokehold. Or at least he's got him by the hair and he's twisting his neck. And the other brother looks like he's got his other brother in a chokehold. And they're, watch they're watching WrestleMania. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know? You know, we read all the time. We used to read all the time about uh, brothers and sisters. I read more than one time where a brother, uh, some boys, uh, they started having these WrestleMania contests in their backyard after school complete with chairs, busting chairs over each other's head and uh, trying to, you know, uh, one boy took his sister and did a backbreaker on his sister, you know, where, you know, he took his sister and he dropped her on her back on his knee to try to break her back. 
Okay, these kind of things go on all the time with children that watch that are influenced by these types of behaviors they see on television or in the movies or in the songs, etc. Remember, we talked about influences. An influence is something that has the potential to to uh, affect the way we think, feel, and act. Okay, and remember, influences are everywhere. They're everywhere. So why do people choose? To disrespect themselves and others. Well, let me give you just a... Can you go to the next slide? Just think about this for a minute. Here's here's a popular movie, especially down in uh, where I'm... where I used to live for about 17 years in South Texas, Scarface. And uh, if you look... Because even they used to have these towels, you know, of Tony Montana, you know, the, the character in Scarface and even the towels that were hanging, there was this place that was called Fallen Angels. It was a place where they sold, uh, you know, towels with movie posters and stuff. And they had this one hanging out there, you know, where everybody would drive by and they would see it, you know. And it said, Scarface, money, power, respect. <laughs> you know, like putting in your mind that, you know, being a drug, he's got a gun in his hand there and he's a drug dealer. So putting in your mind that, you know, uh, this is a form of respect, you know, when you have a gun, you know, when you have power, you have drugs, you have lots of girls, you know, that people are going to respect you, you know, that people should respect you because you have those things, right? If you don't think, if you think I'm wrong, let's go to the next slide, you know. This is an article, uh, this is an article online, it says 19 classic songs about respect for others and yourself, <laughs> okay? Now, this is their idea of what respect is. Remember, this is not the peaceful solution idea, but this is what they're learning from the songs. And I'm only going to show you, I think, a couple of them. <coughs> but this is their words. It says, no self-respecting person is going to put up with disrespect, right? <laughs> now, just that first line alone right there, Listen to what they're saying. No self-respecting person is going to put up with disrespect, right? You know, like, you're not going to put up with it, right? In fact, you're going to tell that person, I don't like the fact that you disrespected me, punk, right? Or something like that, right? That's what it's putting in your mind, you know, that if you respect yourself, you're not going to put up with any disrespect. You're going to go ahead and disrespect them in return, right? No. No. No, that, but that's what they're teaching them. Remember, people are reading this, and look at these children holding up the respect sign there. And the, the, it looks pretty, pretty, doesn't that look pretty, doesn't it look kind of clean, and doesn't it look respectable? <laughs> right? It says, no self-respecting person is going to put up with disrespect, right? This playlist is full of songs about respect that encourage you, encourages you to respect yourself and respect others around you. A little respect goes a long way, so be sure to get what's rightfully yours. <laughs> In other words, make sure that someone gives you respect. And if they don't, like Aretha Franklin once said in that song, R-A-S-P-E-C-T, respect, you don't give me any respect, I'm not giving you any. <laughs> right? Very popular song. All right, let's go to the next slide. Let's look at the, one of the songs that they are promoting here on this list of 19 songs. It's called Money, Power, and Respect. And they describe it. It says, according to the locks, if you have money, you'll get power, which will land you some respect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the locks flaunts all the respect they have in this song, along with their girls and material items. They were pretty respectful since this song charted at number 17 in the U.S. So, you know, see how they're promoting the idea that, wow, because this song went all the way to number 17, people really respect these people. And they had lots of girls and they had lots of property, material items. Man, they you owe them respect. And if you have money, you're going to have power. So therefore, you should have respect because you have money and power, right? This is the idea that's being promoted by the media. And you know as well as I do, this is the way I used to think before I learned any better. So why would no one else think this way, right? 
this seems normal. This is the norm. Let's go to the next song. This is called I'm Gonna Give You Respect by Marvin Gaye. And it says, the singer, now get this. It says, the singer is so in love with his girl that he's willing to ignore what everyone says about her and give her the respect he feels she deserves. He says he'll catch her cheating on him if he wants to believe it. It doesn't matter what others say about her. While this relationship might seem a little rocky, there's no doubt he loves her. <laughs> so here's what they're really saying. That this guy, his friends are telling him, hey, this girl, she's sleeping around with all these different people. But he's willing to ignore that and not, you know, even look at He says, if I want to know she's cheating, he says, I'll catch her cheating if I want to know about that. <laughs> right? But I just want to ignore all that, and I'm going to go ahead and be with this girl, right? Even though I'm hearing all these things, right? And I don't need to look into them. If I want to catch her, I'll catch her, right? Okay. <laughs> this is what they're they're promoting as respect, love, etc. okay? <coughs> I'm not making this up. And I could go on and on and on, but I don't want to. I'm just giving you an idea of some of the silly things that they're putting in people's head about what love is, what respect is, etc. So, why do people choose to disrespect themselves and others on page 14? It says, there are many reasons why disrespect seems to be a normal part of society. One reason is the entertainment industry. Did you know that what you see on TV and in the movies influences your thoughts and interactions? And, you know, it really does. It really it really did. I'd say did because I don't watch them anymore and I don't listen to that kind of music anymore. But it really did. It really had a huge impact on me. <coughs> you know, I don't remember. It was 14,000 hours. Uh, the average high school student, I think they say, listens to 14,000 hours of music. <laughs> I'm not, you know, in their in those formative years there. And I would say, you know, nowadays it's probably a lot more. That was 2003 when that book was written. Um, I think it's probably more than that because music is a huge, huge, huge part of movies and entertainment nowadays. You hear music everywhere, even on commercials, you know. Um, it says... It says, we see disrespectful behavior on TV, talk shows, sitcoms, dramas, and even commercials. In movies, aggression and retaliation are often the main theme, with plots that focus on the hero's quest for vengeance. You know, and you know, I can't sit here and tell you any of the newer stuff. I, don't, I haven't watched movies in years and years, but I can tell you, you know, like, you know, when I think of... Um, quest for vengeance i think of death wish you know charles bronson you know where you know he used to go out at night with his gun and he would find people committing crimes and he would shoot them you know because he wanted to get rid of all the rats in the neighborhood you know he wanted to get rid of all the crime people that were committing crime so if he saw some guy mugging an old lady he would shoot him you know at nighttime you know he would go out and he would kill people that was the whole movie that's what it was about death wish and um you know, you can probably think of other movies where, you know, someone kidnaps somebody's daughter and the guy goes out to get revenge and he goes to find the daughter and then he kills the guy, you know, the that kidnaps the person, right? These are the kind of things they promote in the movies. So, you know, when it says, why do people choose to disrespect themselves and others? Well, just because... They're being heavily influenced by these these forms of media. It says, we also hear disrespectful language in songs and music videos. Cursing, name-calling, murder, and violence are presented for our enjoyment. <laughs> in, for your enjoyment, for your entertainment. <coughs> and we've shown some of them. <coughs> I know, uh, excuse me, I know in past classes I've shown a few examples of some of the lyrics and some of those songs that promote murder you know guy talking about you know murdering his girlfriend and sticking her body in the trash can and how you would enjoy seeing the blood run down the sidewalk and all these different things it's like this is what they're singing about okay this is the love song you know uh 
it's it's really filthy and disgusting but this is what they're learning so and um i see that i'm out of time and uh i know uh i don't want to go over because it's uh 6 30 already um but um the next class is going to be on 1 4 2023 at 5 30 p.m central time i hope you'll join us again we'll pick up where we left off here in the middle of page 14 talking about why do people choose to disrespect themselves and others until until that time show respect to everyone that you meet and we'll see you next class